This is a review on the Canon EOS R3 for wildlife photography. This camera is a 24 megapixel mirrorless camera released by Canon in the fall of 2021, retailing for 6,000 US dollars. Now I rented this camera and tested it out on wildlife out in the field in an entirely separate video where I gave my initial in the field thoughts on the R3 as a wildlife camera. But in this review video specifically, we are going to take a close look at the files on the computer produced by this camera and do a full in-depth review on how it really performs as a wildlife camera. And before I get into this, I do just wanna bring up that there were some really great comments on my in the field testing video um, that pointed out some things that I missed when it comes to shooting on the R3. And I wanna make sure that I clear those up in this video and explain why my thoughts in that initial testing video specifically regarding autofocus may not have been totally accurate. And I'll get into that a little more when I talk about autofocus in this video. So jumping straight into it, the first thing that I wanna talk about in this is the sensor and the image quality on the Canon R3. Um, this is a stacked sensor and this helps with readout speeds and helps to reduce the effects of rolling shutter on your images. And for those of you that don't know what rolling shutter is, essentially it's whenever you have something that is fast moving in the frame or maybe you're panning with something fast moving. Um, for example, in wildlife photography, the main scenario where rolling shutter may come up is um, when you're shooting birds in flight because they're super fast moving and you're panning with them. And because the sensor takes a little bit of time to read the image as that uh, object is moving, it gets stretched out because uh, the sensor can't read it fast enough to um, just capture the whole moment as it is happening. Um, and this is mainly a problem when you have electronic shutters. Not as bad with mechanical, um, but it can still happen with mechanical shutters. This camera has a stack sensor in it. So with both mechanical and electronic, that rolling shutter effect is greatly reduced on the R3, which is really nice, like I said, if you're shooting stuff like birds in flight or fast moving running animals, um, any rolling shutter effects that you might have are gonna be very reduced by the stack sensor in this R3. Additionally, image quality that comes out of the R3 is phenomenal. Um, as you can see by looking at some of these files that I have here. And obviously lenses have something to do with it as well. If you're shooting with a lesser lens, you get lesser image quality. Um, but you know, the sensor does have a huge impact too. And you can see the sensor in the R3 is sharp and very highly detailed. So image quality that comes out of this camera is awesome. But the main thing that I really wanted to discuss in this section is the megapixel count on the R3. It's a 24 megapixel camera and um, you know, don't get me wrong at all. 24 megapixels is more than enough for wildlife photography. If you can fill the frame with that animal, or even if you have to crop just a little bit, 24 is more than enough megapixels. But when you have other cameras out there on the market, such as the Sony A1, the Nikon Z9, and even Canon's own Canon R5, that are competing with this and all shoot at you know 45 and 50 megapixels, it becomes a problem because you're lacking the flexibility and the range that other cameras out there are offering at a similar or even lower price point than the R3 is. For example, let's say that I took an image on the Sony A1 of an animal that's 100 yards away. To get the same resolution that I got on that file in the Sony A1 with the R3, I would have to shoot it from 50 yards away. I would have to move 50 yards closer to that animal to get the same resolution because this camera is half the megapixels of the A1. And in a lot of cases, when you're shooting, you know, skittish wildlife or dangerous wildlife, you can't really get that close to the wildlife, um, at least safely, or, you know, in the case of very skittish animals, they're gonna run away if you try to get close. So having those higher megapixel cameras allows you so much more flexibility to shoot and be able to be further away from the wildlife and really be able to crop in a ton on those images and retain a lot of detail when you're shooting on your A1s, your Z9s, and your R5s. But on the R3, you have to move a lot closer to the animal because you have half the megapixels to get those images. And because of that, it is lacking so much flexibility and so much detail that these other cameras on the market are providing and it's a real knock on the R3. Now I understand that Canon made the R3 24 megapixels for multiple reasons. You know, they wanna have the best high ISO handling possible and with lower megapixels, it's easier to achieve that. Um, and they wanna have, you know, smaller file sizes. So when you're shooting these 30 frames a second bursts, you're not filling up your memory card really quickly. I understand all of that. Don't get me wrong, you can still get extremely high quality, high resolution, great wildlife images out of this 24 megapixel sensor. But you simply aren't gonna get the flexibility, the range, and the resolution that you get out of other cameras that are on the market at a similar price point right now. Next, I'm gonna talk about high ISO handling capabilities on the R3. Where this camera might lack in megapixels, it makes up for it in the high ISO handling and low light shooting capabilities. The R3 handles noise phenomenally. That back illuminated sensor really, really does help. And as you can see by taking a look at some of these files that I have here, this was shot at ISO 16,000 and you know, you can already see it just zoomed out. Not too much noise. Um, 
pretty clean image overall. Really no noticeable noise, maybe a little bit up here, but, but really nothing too noticeable. Then when I zoom in to 100%, you start to notice a little bit, but surprisingly, there's a lot of detail still retained in this image. Definitely a lot more than most cameras would retain at ISO 16,000. And if I zoom in all the way to 300%, you can see how much detail is still maintained in the fur of this animal, in the eye of this animal. Um, even at ISO 16,000, um, you can see the furs up here on the nose. You can see all the fur detail down here. There's just so much detail still retained even when zoomed in this far at ISO 16,000. And like I said, even at 100%, it's a pretty darn clean image. I mean, the noise is definitely visible, but it's not terrible by any means. And when I lift this exposure some, which, you know, typically introduces more noise into your images, you can see that yes, it definitely does, but all the detail is still retained. All the fur detail is still here. All the colors are still in the image um, and have been retained well. You know, I can pump up my vibrance here and still get colors out of that elk and out of the background, out of the grass and everything. Even at ISO 16,000, you still have a file that is 100% usable. And especially after you ran this through Topaz Z-Noise would be basically a totally clean image that you could print as large as you wanted and hang on the wall. Shot at ISO 16,000 which is just insane. That's unheard of. I mean, like I said, where the R3 lacks in megapixels, it does make up for it and it's high ISO noise handling. So that is really awesome. And for wildlife, when we're shooting in these low light conditions in the early morning and the late evening when the wildlife is most active, the R3 is going to really excel due to how well it manages noise and how clean the files are when you're shooting at a high ISO. Now I wanna jump in here to remind you all that I'm giving away a free trip to Yellowstone National Park to photograph wildlife later this fall. I just announced earlier this week the entry process for this giveaway in another video so check out this video linked up here to see how to enter for that. All you have to do is be a subscriber, check out this video to enter, and you get a chance to go to Yellowstone National Park and photograph wildlife for free, paid for by me. So hit that subscribe button, check out this video, and join me in Yellowstone. Now let's get back to the video. So next, I'm gonna talk about the autofocus system in the Canon R3. And I wanna correct something here that I believe I was wrong about in my initial testing video that I put out a couple weeks ago in regards to autofocus. Basically, one of the things that I hadn't taken into consideration were the limitations that the lens that I was using might have on the autofocus system of the R3. The Canon EF100-400 to that you see up on the shelf back here is the only lens that I have for wildlife photography. And so it was the only lens that I used with this camera. And when using it, I only noticed small improvements in focusing speed and accuracy when comparing the R3 to the R5. But upon talking to others, they mentioned that they have seen huge differences in the autofocus speed and accuracy of the R3 compared to the R5. The R3 is much, much better, especially in low light conditions and when shooting fast moving subjects such as birds in flight. And this is when they were shooting on prime lenses that are better and faster than the 100 to 400 that I have. So it's likely that the 100 to 400 that I was shooting on limited the focusing speed and accuracy of the camera, meaning that I never shot the R3 at full potential when it comes to autofocus. And so, I saw its autofocus speed and accuracy as closer to the R5s, while other people who have shot it at its full potential on these big prime lenses have noticed a much larger gap there. So I apologize for that. That was just me not thinking it through enough and not considering the effect that my lens might have on the R3 when shooting. And because of that, I gave inaccurate info on the Canon R3's full potential in that video. However, I can say that even with the limited autofocus that I was using on the R3, the autofocus system is still incredible on this camera for a multitude of reasons. First of all, I wanna talk about animal eye autofocus. Even if it was somewhat limited in speed and accuracy due to the fact that I was using the 100 to 400, it was still phenomenal and was very, very helpful when shooting wildlife. And you might remember in my Canon R5 review that I did a few months ago, I mentioned that, you know, eye autofocus is really great, but it works best when you're shooting animals that are either dogs, cats, or birds, or that look like dogs, cats, or birds, because those are the presets that were built into the camera. And I still noticed that to be true when shooting on the R3. And this wouldn't be something that is limited by the fact that I was using the 100 to 400, because this is something that is solely dependent on the deep learning and the AI that's built into the camera. It has nothing to do with the speed or accuracy that might be affected by a lens. Um, and, and I definitely noticed that it has the same problem that the R5 has, in this regard. It doesn't focus as well on ungulate eyes, um, such as elk or deer or anything like that, as it does on bird eyes, because ungulates and other hooved animals are not kind of built into the system, and they don't look like any of the animals that are built into the system, dogs, cats, or birds. Um, so you're gonna have that same problem that you have with the R5 and the R6 in that regard, where it's gonna work best for your dogs, cats, and birds, or animals that look like them. And it's gonna be lesser for animals that are hooved, like, you know, elk, deer, things like that. And this is something that I'm really hoping Canon will improve upon eventually in the future. Um, I'm really wanting them to, you know, put in a preset for maybe horses um, that's, you know, built in just like the dogs, cats, and birds. 
um, is built into the system as one of the animals that it recognizes because if they were to put in, you know, like I said, a horse or, or a cow or deer or something like that, one of these hoof stock animals, it would recognize your deer and your elk and your bison and all that a lot better. So this is really something that you're still gonna experience with this and that I really hope Canon improves upon in the future in a firmware update or maybe on just, you know, the next generation of the R5 or the R3. Additionally, just like on any other camera, you have your spot AF, your zone AF, all of that. But one really nice feature of the R3 is that you can actually change the size of the zone to fit whatever you're shooting. So you can go in and you can customize the zone to be maybe long and slender like this, or maybe you want it slender vertically like this. Maybe you want it to be a square, maybe a rectangle, whatever you want. You can customize the zone to be that size, which is really, really helpful when you're shooting a very specific subject and you need uh, a certain size box to pick it out and to pick out focus on it um, as best as possible. This is really helpful and a really nice feature of uh, the R3. And another feature that I really liked about the R3 was the new smart controller that has been integrated on this. Um, this was introduced on Canon's 1DX Mark III and they've now carried it over to the R3 and it is phenomenal. I had never shot with this smart controller before, but basically you put your thumb on the AF button and it actually has this little controller on it where you can slide your thumb around and it moves the autofocus point around. And it is so much faster and so much more accurate than the joystick that honestly after using this, the joystick feels ancient because um, with this smart controller you can move that focus point with pinpoint accuracy just like that it is really really something else and was probably my very favorite feature of the r3 um, that i hadn't used before on any other cameras especially for wildlife when we're shooting subjects that you know are moving quickly and at any moment might change directions and go the other direction we need to be able to move that focus point very quickly and react very quickly and with the smart controller it is much easier to do the joystick will take you twice as long maybe three times as long to get the focus point where you want it when compared to the smart controller so this is a feature that i'm very pleased with and i think has a great application for wildlife photography. Now the final thing that I want to talk about in regards to autofocus on the R3 is eye control autofocus. Now this is different than animal eye autofocus. Animal eye autofocus tracks the animal's eye in the frame. Eye control autofocus follows your eye as it moves around in the viewfinder and focuses wherever you put your eye. So it's two totally different things. I know they kind of sound similar. They're two totally different things. Eye control follows your eye and focuses where you put your eye. Um, and while I really, really do like this feature, and I think that it has some awesome applications for other styles of photography, for example, if you're shooting, you know, a track meet, um, this would be so awesome at a track meet. Um, if you do, you know, race car photography, wedding photography, eye control would be phenomenal. But for wildlife, you can't really apply it too well for a couple of reasons. Now it is very good for acquiring your initial autofocus point. You can move your eye straight onto that animal's eye, hold down to focus, and it's gonna immediately focus right on that animal's eye, just like that. Um, and especially if you're struggling to have animal eye control autofocus work and animal eye is really not picking up on the eye whenever you're pressing down, you know, maybe it's picking up on the ear or the antler or something like that. Animal eye is just not picking out the eye for you. Eye control can be very helpful in that situation because you can just look right at the eye and focus and it's going to immediately focus there. Um, so that it can be helpful for that, especially when you're acquiring that initial focus point and it will track the eye. Once you've done that and you've looked at the animal's eye, held down and locked onto the animal's eye, it will track the eye. So it's great in that regard and can be applied to wildlife in some situations. But my main problem with eye control autofocus for wildlife photography is that I found that each time that I went out to shoot, I had to recalibrate eye control for it to focus accurately. Um, I believe this was because the lighting situation was changing each time that I went out to shoot and so it wasn't able to totally pick out what I was looking at and uh, what I wanted it to focus on because it hadn't been calibrated to my eye in that lighting situation. Um, now maybe this is something that you know the more that you use the R3 um, and the more that you calibrate it the more it's going to learn your eye and it's not going to be as much of a problem but at least for the time that I used it every single time that I went out and every single time that the light changed and I was in a different lighting situation, I had to recalibrate it. And this is obviously not ideal in any way for wildlife photography because we're shooting outdoors in constantly changing and uncontrollable lighting situations. And you know, in just an hour's time span, we could go from overcast to harsh light to golden hour light. We could go through a ton of different lighting situations and we can't just be recalibrating every single time that the light changes there. Especially when we're shooting wildlife as well and you have, you know, these very fleeting fast moments to capture that shot that you're looking for and you need to constantly have control of your autofocus system and constantly be able to move that autofocus point as quickly and as accurately as possible this just doesn't work you just can't be recalibrating every single time that the light changes because if you are you're gonna miss shots every time that you know you have an animal moving in front of you but the lighting just changed so you have to recalibrate you're gonna miss shots of that animal whereas if you were just using spot autofocus or zone autofocus or animal eye autofocus 
you could throw that camera up, move your focus point where you wanted, lock on and start shooting. So while eye control autofocus is a really great idea and I think it has some great applications for other styles of photography, for wildlife, because you have to recalibrate in each different lighting situation, I just don't think that it applies that much. And I just feel like more often than not, eye control AF is going to impede your ability to get shots rather than help you get shots. I think you're better off just forgetting about it and relying on spot AF and zone AF and animal eye AF for focusing when you're doing wildlife photography so that you're making sure that you constantly have control that focus system you're constantly looking down the lens of the camera and you're not missing any shots when an animal is in front of you and there's great potential for shots messing with that recalibration is just going to lose you shots whereas if you had just used another method or a combo of some of the other methods you would have gotten plenty of in focus shots and wouldn't have been fiddling around with eye control for the entire shoot so those are my thoughts on the focus system in the canon r3 i think it's a phenomenal focus system with tons of options and tons of great new features um, it's just that maybe not all the features can be applied to wildlife photography. And those are pretty much all of the very big things that I wanted to note on in this video. But now I'm going to move into some of the smaller things that I really wanted to talk about. First of all is frame rate. The Canon R3 can shoot 30 frames a second raw files for 150 frames, so for five seconds. And as you can imagine, holding down the shutter button for five seconds is actually a pretty long amount of time. And to be able to shoot that many frames, all raw images, 150 frames, in that time without filling up the buffer is pretty phenomenal on this camera. And Canon also claims that the R3 can shoot 12 frames a second on the mechanical shutter for up to a thousand images. Now this is not something that I tested out because I didn't want to fill up my card when I was out in the field, but I can say that I never filled the buffer while shooting mechanical shutter. I mean, based on what it's able to achieve, the 30 frames a second with the electronic shutter, it would not surprise me at all if you're able to shoot 12 frames a second for up to a thousand frames, which is really ridiculous and really amazing. And I don't know anyone that would actually be holding down the shutter for that long in any practical situation. But if you are, then uh, hey, this camera can do it for you. Frame rate on this camera is definitely one of the best on the market. Next, I wanted to talk about battery life. Battery life on this camera is pretty darn good. Definitely really great for a mirrorless camera. It's not quite on par with what DSLRs could shoot at, um, but obviously this is mirrorless and mirrorless battery life has always been worse than DSLRs. Um, but this is, at least compared to like the R5, a big step up in battery life. And this does use one of the larger Canon batteries that fits into the built-in battery grip on the bottom of the camera. And speaking of the built-in battery grip, this is another thing that I should note on about the R3 that I really, really liked, you know? I've never used a camera with a built-in battery grip before this, and I didn't really notice how much I'm missing out on shooting vertical. Um, I often don't shoot vertical because it's a lot easier, obviously, to just shoot horizontal like this um, than to, you know, twist your arms like this and have to, you know, hold the shutter button on the top. So I oftentimes find that I don't shoot vertical and I don't have many vertical frames in my portfolio. But when you're able to turn it vertical and just have that grip on the side and still shoot with your hand on the side of the camera, it's very helpful, makes it a lot more comfortable and easier to shoot vertical. And I definitely found myself shooting vertical a lot more with that built-in battery grip, which I really did like. Next, to briefly talk about the memory card slots on this camera, you have one slot for a CF Express card and one for an SD card. Personally, I don't like this. I prefer to have two CF slots um, instead of one SD and one CF. I don't like that having a different card there, um, but that's what Canon has chose to do on it. And um, you know, we just kind of have to live with it. At least there's two card slots. And I also want to note on the video specs of the Canon R3. Now I'm not a huge video guy. I don't know a ton about video, um, but I do know a little bit. So I'm going to mention these specs here. Um, first of all, you have 6K 60 frames a second raw video, and you also have 4K 120 in this camera, which is really, really a nice feature. Um, I, I really love shooting in 4K 120. Love getting that nice, smooth, slow motion effect. Um, so really happy that that's on the R3 as well. And then finally, the last thing that I wanted to note on here is the thing that blew me away the most about the Canon R3, and that is the level of customization that is allowed in this camera. This totally blew my mind. Just scrolling through the menus, seeing how you could program every single button on this camera to do a different thing is insane. It's honestly overwhelming when you first get the camera and you look into the menus, how much customization is there. But it's a really great thing because you basically seriously can customize any button to do anything. You can customize the camera to do anything you want. And while I didn't get to dive into it too much because there's just so much there and I only had a limited amount of time with the camera, the little bit of customization that I did do and all of the scrolling through the menus that I did, all of the looking at these different customization options that I did while I had the R3 showed that this camera has an absolute ton of potential for customization. Um, and you can basically set it up however you want. So I was really blown away by that. The options you have to customize this camera to fit your needs are basically endless. So in the end, this is a truly awesome wildlife photography camera. Great high ISO noise handling, great customization options, 
focusing system is amazing, super high frame rate, overall is awesome, but I still have the one big issue with this camera, that is that it's 24 megapixels. Given that you have these competitors out there, the A1, the Z9, and even Canon's own R5, which costs $2,000 less, which have so many more megapixels, I really just think that it's a problem for the R3. And while I don't think that Canon necessarily needed to go as far as making it, you know, 45 or 50 megapixels like these other cameras, I think if they had at least bumped this camera up to 30 megapixels, it would have benefited from it. I just think that in today's day and age, given the other options that are out there at the same price point or at even lower price points, Canon missed the mark just a little bit here and should have raised this up to at least 30 megapixels um, to compete better with some of those other cameras. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of people will be pleased with 24 megapixels, but to me, I was disappointed when I saw that it was 24 megapixels and I was definitely disappointed when using it in the field and noticing how much less detail I got when zooming in and cropping in when I compare it to my R5, which is 45 megapixels. And again, don't get me wrong, the R3 is a phenomenal wildlife camera, better than most cameras out there on the market, but I do just have that one little problem with it where I think that um, when you compare it to other cameras at the same price point, it is really, really lacking in the megapixel division. So that was a lot of information to get out there, but I think I've got everything that I wanted to say about the R3 in here. And uh, those are my comprehensive thoughts on the Canon R3 for wildlife photography. I hope that I got all the information in there that you guys are looking for. And I hope that you guys found this video helpful and informative. So that's all I have on the R3, but I do want to remind you guys to subscribe for that 1000 subscriber Yellowstone trip giveaway and go back to the other video, which I'll link up above and enter in that for the chance to win that. If you don't win that one, like I say in this video, there will be a chance to win another big trip giveaway when I hit 10,000 subscribers. So subscribe for that guys. If you haven't already, don't forget to drop a comment down below as well. And let me know what you guys thought. Drop a like as well. That greatly benefits the channel. And I just want to say thank you again so much for watching. I really do hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it helpful and I'll see you all in the next video.